the importance of the National Secular Society has been brought home to me today when I attended Sandy Toxvig's wedding. And the joy that was there at the festival hall was just so overwhelming. And I thought back 35 years ago to appearing in the Old Bailey for gay news on a blasphemy charge. It's incredible that it taken 35 years but the National Secular Society has pioneered the end of blasphemy, the end of discrimination on religious grounds against the lesbian and gay community. When I defended gay news, we had only one MP, Maureen Colhoun, who was gay and she was outed and destroyed by the Daily Mail. That was the kind of atmosphere in the 1970s where the judges were all on the side of the church, they manipulated the law, they manipulated the jury. And so, 35 years later, we have uh, a, 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 an eruption of joy that Mrs. Whitehouse, well, I'm glad she didn't live to see. Uh, it is a sea change. It's been brought about partly by the work of the National Secular Society. It shows that uh, there is a key to unlocking the humanity and the real love that people, human beings, can have. And the National Secular Society has been vital in the process of doing away with those, with doctrines that bind uh, our deeds and our desires. I think secularism is important because human beings have to find a way of living with each other. And there are lots and lots of things that we all disagree about. And one of the most divisive issues is religion. And religion to me, they're always competing power systems. So they all claim to have a kind of monopoly on truth. And what tends to happen is each religion wants to, to, to determine the values that other people live by. And that's to me, as somebody who isn't religious, is not acceptable. I think we have to find a set of values which are basically secular values, they're not derived from some kind of religious book or some religious authority or somebody who claims to speak on behalf of a religion. Um, we have to agree a set of values which are basically about equality and human rights. And I think secularism actually protects those of us who don't have a religion, but it also protects the people who have weaker religions from the stronger religions. So I think secularism is actually the only way for peaceful coexistence in the modern world. I think the, the National Secular Society is important because we don't have enough secular voices speaking up. We live in a country which is clearly secular. I mean, the census has show that in the Social Attitude Survey. Um, people don't, on the whole, most people don't go to church, mosque, gurdwara, whatever. Um, most of us live lives that are not hugely influenced by religion. But we have a kind of slightly sclerotic state which still has an established church and which pays lip service to, to Christian values. So it's incredibly important that in every debate that we have, whether it's about reproductive rights or um, gay marriage, equal marriage, things like that, or just about you know, how we live our lives, that there has to be a counter voice there which is speaking on behalf of all of us who don't want our lives to be ruled by religion. And that's what the National Secular Society stands for. What we, we need to remember the extraordinary dichotomy that we have in Britain because it, on the one hand it is one of the least religious and curiously also religiously diverse countries in the world. But on the other hand, by some very objective measures, it's one of the least secular countries in the Western world. And the two examples I would give, uh, the Westminster Parliament is the only one to give uh, uh, seats to bishops in its legislature. And England and Wales are the only countries in the world to require mainly Christian daily education in worship in every school every day. So, and I suspect those two are connected in that because we've got the bishops in the House of Lords, that has remained and it's so ridiculous when only roughly 6% of the population are in church on a normal Sunday. So that's the context. 
and it's education where the ordinary person in the street suffers most from the lack of secularism because a third of the schools are religious schools and that will often mean that people can't get into their local totally state-funded school around the corner and they might not be able to get into it without uh, being required to pretend to go to well to go to church and pretend to uh, worship uh, but not pretend actually put the money in the collection just to get this state funded facility and that's absolutely dreadful but away from schools uh, I think that we are uh, really in something of a battle uh, on our fundamental values because there seems to be a growing uh, deference to religion on human rights uh, particularly on uh, freedom of expression on the admission that uh, women can be treated in such a bad way uh, just because it's on religious grounds and I think that's something which we're going to have to work very hard to, uh, to stop because in, in, eventually that's going to erode our culture. Well, I'm Sue Cox and I'm the co-founder of Survivors Voice Europe. Uh, we're an organisation that supports uh, survivors of Catholic clergy. We're all uh, victims of Catholic clergy. Uh, secularism is desperately important to me because as a clergy abuse survivor, for many years I felt not part of the human race. Um, I think in one fell swoop the Catholic Church created a whole subculture of people who don't quite belong anywhere. And it wasn't really until I met secularism and humanism that I actually felt part of the human race. Our collaboration with the National Secular Society, especially in the uh, Pope protest and also with uh, the recent UN delegation has been invaluable, a real significant breakthrough. And I can honestly say that as a survivor of clergy abuse, the only compassion I've ever really received has been from secularists, humanists, atheists. And for that I'm incredibly grateful, so it's very important to me. In recent years we have seen in Britain the re-emergence and revival of religious fundamentalism of all different hues and this fundamentalism is seeking to claim for itself special unique privileges, privileged access to government, privileged exemptions in equality laws. I don't believe it's right that our equality laws have exemptions for faith organisations. Not just places of worship, but exemptions for faith schools, faith-run hospitals, nursing homes, shelters for the homeless. To have that religious privilege of being above the law that applies to everyone else is fundamentally wrong in a democratic society. And the National Secular Society is playing such a vital role in challenging religious privilege to ensure that all people of all beliefs, whether religious or not, have equal rights and responsibilities under the law. Now for all of these reasons I've set out to you, I think you ought to think very carefully whether it wouldn't be a good idea to join the National Secular Society that fights so hard uh, to promote uh, the fights against these kind of problems. And we really have got a good track record and religious people put loads of money behind their churches and their campaigning. Secular people, I'm afraid, don't seem to realise that it does need money to do this. So please join the National Secular Society and put your support in a tangible way to the society for a better future for us all. Thank you. Thank you.